Greetings, Happy New Year 2024, and welcome to SmartwatchTix.com. Guys, we are going to just open things up into this new year. I'm looking forward to some great enhancements in both smartwatches and smart rings this year, so definitely worth a subscription. It's free on your part, so you can keep up with us. A lot's coming. Today we're taking a look at a thing called the VA9 Pro Max and a VA9 Ultra 2. Now what are these? Well, they are kind of Apple Watch look-alike devices. The VA9 Pro looks a lot like the, the size and shape and case of a traditional Apple Watch. You'll see it in here in a moment. The VA9 Ultra 2 now takes that to the next level, looking a lot like the Apple Watch Ultra. But inside, they got stuff that is totally different that you won't find on an Apple Watch, that's for sure. In the unboxing, you see we've got a little manual on both of these, and they talk a lot about the watches. Ah! It's missing! Ah! Who took my ultra? That's all right. It's already on a band, and we're going to be playing with that later. <laughs> but I do have this one for you. That's embarrassing. I usually put them back in. This is how it looks when you get it. It's uh, wrapped up in a nice little sleeve here, and... Um, representative of the module itself. This is the one in kind of a gunmetal gray, and it's sweet. We're going to talk, talk a whole lot about this. Each of these comes with a couple of bands. This has got kind of a nice dark gray to it, and it uh, looks like a, a kind of a deeper gray and a, and a brown. Here you've got uh, a black, and then there's another black one that's uh, uh, or a different color one that's actually on the watch itself with it. We'll see. They come with these... Uh, wireless charging um, docks here. You have a concave side. You set the watch on it and charge it up. Works really great. And it also comes... Yeah, I've got an extra one. This one is the VA9 um, Pro Max in silver. And we are actually going to start with this one because this is unopened, un used, factory restored. It's just out of the box the way you are going to get it. This has a completely different type of a band, and again, the black band comes along with it well. Before we even begin, I do want to tell you some of the differences, again, between the VA9 Ultra and Ultra 2, and the VA9 Pro and the Pro Max. One of the main things is an enhancement to the chat GPT system. Uh, new features that gives you a lot more depth and breadth of capability, along with AI-generated watch faces. We'll teach you how to do that today on this one and show you on other ones what uh, some of the creations we've got uh, going, uh, including, yep, Swifties. I think you heard about it already. We've got Taylor Swift holding a football. I know, not a big deal, but it was totally done through AI generation. That's what makes it fun, and it makes it so you could make any kind of watch face you'd like as soon as you get one of these watches. But it's going to set you back. Mm. AI isn't cheap, right? No, it's free because it comes with the watch that you can get for as little as 17 bucks, under 17 bucks for one unit. Now, this is Alibaba. Alibaba is like a wholesale place that generally sells quantities of these things to companies that then brand them and sell them to people like us, the customers. But you can get this as low as one unit, or you can order a sample, um, which is basically the same price, of the VA9 Pro Max for $16.88 right now from the company Valdis that is manufacturing this. In case you're interested in picking it up through AliExpress, more of a retail outlet, well, the VA9 Pro Max isn't available in the United States through AliExpress. However, it is available outside the USA, and I'll have links in the show notes that you can go over and pick it directly up from these guys. There is another model, though. It's called the HK9 Pro Plus and Generation 3, and it's exactly the same, basically. You got two gigabytes of ROM in these things. Now, that's storage for music players. 
So you can load up music in this watch and play it to your heart's desire, either out of the watch or through earbuds. Chat GPT in it, AI watch face in it, dynamic island, you've seen that in the Apple phones, right, that floats at the top on the apps that support it, and of course, full AMOLED screen on all of this. You've gone up a little bit because you're going to a retail outlet now, but still, for about $35, if you prefer to use this resource, you should be able to pick up the HK9 Pro Plus, which, like I said, is basically the same as the VA9 uh, Pro Max. Inside this one, here's the specs on the VA9 Pro Max. You've got, let's see if we can get that all centered in here, 2.02 um, .02 inch AMOLED screen. It's using the Wear, Wear Pro app, uh, 380 milliamp hour battery. That's your screen resolution here and IP68 waterproof, okay? That's all the stuff on the VA9 Pro Max. Now, we come over here again to Alibaba and look at the VA9 Ultra 2. Ho oh, ho, same price. So it doesn't matter if you want the original Apple looking size shape watch or the fancy Ultra one, you're gonna pick it up basically the same if you wanna go directly to the Valdez Alibaba store to pick it up. Again, this is like a wholesale store, so you got to set up an account and get things ready so that you can buy it. But if you do, you can start getting these items at a really, really discounted wholesale type of a price. If that's not your cup of tea, you can definitely go over to Alibaba or AliExpress and pick it up from there. The, um, the difference is, though, uh, and this is important... On AliExpress, the ultra size and shape appears not to be available, either as the VA9 or the HK9 suffix added. So the real way you'll be able to get this one is through what we just saw, the Alibaba um, store. Then the VA9 Ultra 2 smartwatch, its specs in comparison, basically has all the other support, but it's a bigger screen, 2.2 inch, Still has a two gigabytes of memory, 380 uh, milliamp hour battery. The screen resolution's a bit different, of course, because it's a bigger screen, 460 by 5, 4, uh, 460 by 520, and IP68 as well. Okay, are you ready? Would you like to play with that fancy AI watch face first, and we'll unbox it a little bit later? Sure, me too. Let's do it. So this is going to get you into using AI watch faces as fast as possible. We're going to start with a fresh out-of-the-box watch module. We're going to press and hold the top button, give it a moment to light up and turn on. Now, it's in its original factory restored uh, setting. So it's going to give you a welcome to begin with and then take you into the available languages and it's marked for Chinese because it's basically sold in that marketplace. We're going to go to English because our channel's in English. I'm going to set the watch to that. And now it wants you to uh, pair this watch to the appropriate app. And we're going to do that because that's where the AI actually lives for doing this watch face design. WearFit Pro from the Google Play Store. That's what the icon looks like. When you download it and you install it, and you open it, and you create yourself an account, and you get everything ready to go, you'll land on this initial advertising page. It always gives me one of those. But I can say continue to the app, and we're over there now. Now it's actually loading up um, the Ultra, um, because that's the one that I've actually been using. Uh, but it's off, so I can't connect to it. We're then going to go over to devices. So that's where you got to begin. And then, of course, you get some more ads and information. We've Oh, it did connect. Okay, it's connected to the Ultra, but we're actually going to be adding a different one, right? The VA9 Pro Max, fresh out of the box. I'm going to come in here and say Add Device. And because I have it turned on, it finds it instantly. So I'm going to say Connect, and it's going to go through the pairing process. We're going to pair it right away. Connection Success, select it, loading desperately. Uh, I'm not going to turn on notifications because I don't really want to do all of that stuff for our watch face design. So we'll just get this stuff ready at this level. Cancel out of all of this. And now uh, we're here with the VA9 Pro Max. 
and it's giving me a QR code to scan for downloading the app because it's not quite sure what's going on. And I'm back to the watch faces. So let's move this out of the way. Here's how we get there. When you twirl the knob, you can switch between different watch faces typically, but now we're actually going through all of the different uh, uh, things when you get when you swipe to the right. Let's do it this way instead. Press and hold. We're not going to change this particular opening image. And there's several other dials that are listed here. Um, you can change this one slightly. It's kind of an animated cartoon one. You have a few other ones. Whoops. And when you finally, finally get over here to this particular one, it says AI watch face. This is where we begin. So that's the first step after you get it paired is bring up this particular face. Now we're going to pick up with the app. We've got the watch face ready to go. We're going to come back to the home screen. Right here you see we have the chat GPT itself active. If that shows up then that means you're paired properly to a watch that can handle chat GPT. But we're not doing that. We're going to do the AI exquisite dial. So let me switch over to that for you. So the first thing you get is called style switching. You have all these different styles of image generation that you can select from and it will create the image in that type of a style. You want to try a cute animal avatar. All right. With the dial plate template selected, we switch back to the watch now with the watch face showing for AI watch creation. We now have to go into the apps and we look for the app right here. You see that one? That is for the AI watch face creation. When we open it up, now we have the AI voice button and we can select whatever we want. Since we're working with a Taylor Swift theme, let's try this one. Taylor Swift blowing a kiss. Tap that to end the recording. Now it's off sending that stuff Bluetooth connected to the uh, phone and running through the AI image generation engine. And it should come back in a moment. Well, I got a failure on that one, so I've switched over to Bluetooth. I've made sure that I'm connected for calls to the VA9 Pro Max, and I make sure calls, audio, and input device is turned on. And it says the device is a headphone, so you're using the speaker in here as if it was a Bluetooth headset. So let's do this all over again. There we go. Once it gets the text in the box now, it's still not doing it until you hit to generate. So we're going to start generation. This says open the WearFit uh, Pro app, and it's doing that automatically here. And it says don't leave the app. Let it go, otherwise it might not work. So now you just kind of kick back and wait while it goes through its process. Look, it's doing it. AI dial transmission in process. We're at 75%. And here we go. Whoa, really? That's blowing a kiss for sure. Okay, uh, let's save that watch face and set it there. All right. Um, not exactly what I expected, but there... <laughs> Oh dear, I'm not sure that's that's appropriate right now with where, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's try another one. So I'm going to change from graduation avatar to paper comic avatar. Let's give that one a try. We're going to come back in here and go into our AI generation. And, oh, what do you think? How about Taylor Swift wearing a hat? That seems safer, doesn't it? While we're waiting for it to get the words up, I wanted to show you why we're changing around from uh, these different templates. Remember the cute animal was the first one I did? And then graduation avatar? Well, if I scroll all the way up, it shows you the faces that were generated. This is what it comes out with the cute animal. And I uh, didn't think that was appropriate, but I should have got the idea that it might not be just... Whew, blowing a kiss. Anyway, this is what uh, we generate when we're using 
the graduation avatar. And sure enough, look, they got the graduation hats on. So now we're looking at paper comic avatars. It's all different kinds for landscape type paintings and animals and origami or or you know how to say that origami <laughs> kitten style oops if you want to um but they're fun to play with all these different ones there we go it's going in uh the process right now you can see that happening here as it's downloading it to the phone and what are we going to get we're getting this well i can't really tell so let's just take it and expand it and that's the image. Of course, we can move the time around and move it uh, other places on the watch face and change what else is here as well. Come back up here, and there you go. That's what it looks like on the image itself. So not Taylor Swift, but a person wearing a hat. Now, Okay, that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do to generate uh, artificial intelligence watch faces or dials. One more thing to show you before we leave this. It's getting dark here. Uh, we changed uh, from the paper comic avatar to cyberpunk, and I wanted to show you the results. Asking the same basic question um, about Taylor Swift wearing a hat. This time it got it right. This is the picture it came up with. So blowing them up, there is the cyberpunk. It gives you the background and the and the um, clothing. Um, to go with whatever you're asking for. You also have that one that we did earlier and then the one we did when we first began on Blowing a Kiss. So those are the uh, AI, three of them, and it'll keep the last three AI dials available for you to upload at any time you want to your, um, to your watch. And what does the final dial look like with the cyberpunk image on it? You ready? Here you go. You have the ability, of course, in the app to move the uh, date and time and power level all around and change the font and the colors of it if you want to as well. But there you go, Taylor Swift, Cyberpunk Watch Face. Now, we're ready to get back to reviewing this little puppy. First, I want to say, where is Taylor? From the app, you can say, find device. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I don't think that's quite got her accent down, but good try. <laughs> what I wanted to show with that is how sophisticated this is getting now. Instead of it just beeping and ringing, uh, there's a lot of changes to the user interface uh, in these newest editions of these watches with colorful uh, cards and with new sounds, and it really is spectacular. We'll get back to the app later when we take a look at this one. This is the uh, Ultra 2. You can see by, by the design on the side. And you're supposed to wake up. I think it's because I got it on the wrong arm. It's not used to that. All right. There's the first Taylor Swift uh, screen that I ever made. And it was the one where I just asked the AI for Taylor holding a football. And I really like it. And you can also change date and time information in 12 or 24 hour mode too so we'll do a full walkthrough of all of the apps on this one but for this one i just wanted to show you what it looks like when you get it out of the box so let's let's dive into it when you swipe down on all of these you get your notifications sent from the phone the ones that you've turned on you'll see a lot more about that but what's new is it gives you a translucent screen it's not solid black and it comes down really smoothly and nicely you also have the time on all of these uh, cards and tiles and faces and things that you bring down. So very, very nice. You're going to be able to see all of the stuff you can do here. This is the default. You see the four of them that are in here. You also have, when you pull off to the right, an overall um, listing of some basic stuff. Uh, it looks like your call for the uh, AI and... Um, you've got your rain forecast too. It's not going anywhere further than that. But again, this is just out of the box. When you swipe up, now you get more information with a date and time forecast. And this is what I'm talking about. The really colorful ways that they're presenting this information. Those are all of the places you get to by swiping. 
like that and that and that and that, right? Those are all of these. And then you've got buttons on the side. Now, on the lower button, when you tap it, you get typically the controls that we normally see when you swipe down. And this is as it is right out of the box. You have these uh, small limited numbers, six of them. But you can edit and change the order and add more to it. And you'll see that on this one when we go into detail because there's a lot of nice things you can add. You got the twist your wrist to see the time and Bluetooth activated and so forth. We'll give you details on those as we go along. That was with a single push on this button, but it doesn't take you back. It's really weird. I would figure it would toggle. You have to tap the top button to get back. When you double tap on this one, you get the previous apps that you've looked at and you can clear them individually if you want to and so forth. I keep forgetting I can twist if I have places to go. And again, you can't get back. You have to hit the top button. All right, the only thing we haven't covered is what happens when you actually tap the top button. And that gets you into all of your different uh, apps in the same style and method that Apple has been using now for years. Highlight whichever one you want and zoom in on it, right? If you double tap, you can switch to the linear mode, which is what I do in my reviews because it's easier to see what the icons and the names of them are. Double tap again, you get yet another way of displaying all of these apps with beautiful color graphics in them. Double tap, we're into this. Isn't that fun? Did you see how they all popped into view? Double tap again. Now you've got a circle that you can twirl around. And I guess you can make different... Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Is that where you come over and go to another page? Anyway, that's all there. It tells you what you're on with the one in the middle. Double tap again. We're in this type of a format. Again, you can twirl it up and down with this one. Double tap. Wow, okay, now we have a broader exposure to it that goes outside of the confines of the screen itself. Double tap, and we're back again. Oh, okay, so that was the first one. This is the one I typically operate in, and I'm just going to show you. You've got an app market. We'll talk all about these. We've spent time now already on the AI watch face. Local music is where you can load up uh, and play the music that's on the watch and so forth. Voice menu. There's chat GPT-2. We'll take a deeper look at that. All of these are in the watch. Now, in both versions, you don't see much difference here because they have exactly the same stuff in them. The only thing that would be different is uh, if apps are added to this watch, which... Um, you have a little bit of limited ability to do um, when you get into the um, the app area. Okay, uh, and then the app view change is available down here if you want to go through and select it manually rather than double tapping through all of these. So now the VA9 Pro Max, this one is a 2.02 inch screen on it and a little bit larger on the Ultra version is a 2.22 screen, I believe. And you can see the difference right there. In terms of overall weight, this one is a bit heavier. It has the extra button on the side. Here you have your speaker uh, as a slot. Here it's kind of right next to it up here. On this side, you've got the buttons, the same round button and pillbox button with the microphone in here. But this one's got this kind of extruded part of the case to it. Typical Apple design. The bands are put in uh, the same way, just sliding in from the side. The sensors are on the bottom. Yeah, other than that, the layout and operation are very similar. So we're going to dive into the Ultra for that part of the uh, video. Now, just a reminder, this is a watch for under $17. Unbelievable AMOLED screen, always on display right now in the analog uh, look. Tiny little twist of your wrist, and you get this brilliant, colorful, full edge-to-edge -edge screen. Now, I like this particular design in the black body with the orange button on the side. These are kind of subdued. On the right-hand side, this is the Ultra, of course, in its design. And... Uh, 
This is all decked out, guys. This has got all of the features activated in a way that I like in my particular layout. When you swipe down, you get this transparent screen now. If you have any notices, they'll show up. And check all these pages. They have the time and the display in the upper right-hand corner as well. When we go off to the left now, we get first into the step count information, and right here, you can tap there before you go anywhere and see what your uh, totals are in an analog kind of way and even change your targets if you want to. You got some dots here, which means you can scroll up, see some other things. Here's your step count per hour. And you uh, go up again, and you've got number of minutes uh, you've exercised in 15-minute increments, and you can change your goals right here. And this is the number of times you've actually moved around, uh, basically did 100 steps or more in the, in, per hour, and it just keeps track of those with a goal that you can set there too. Those are fun, and they're all available right here, and they'll transfer over to the app too. Come in here, you're going to get your heart rate reading, uh, when you land on this page, if you have it on, I'll just cover the diodes while it's active. It's telling you your last reading down here. Again, we've got dots, so we can either swipe it or twirl it. We'll twirl the knob and show you the um, spread of the heart rate readings from midnight to midnight against an actual calibrated scale. Your current heart rate is uh, defined right there as it's measuring it. Again, you've got resting heart rate, and it's figuring that out for you. And another turn shows you your walking heart rate. Uh, all of that stuff integrated into this one particular reading that's available on this particular page. Come over again now to the right. You're getting uh, blood oxygen. You can start it. It's going to give you a 67 countdown. It's using the green diodes on this one, not the red ones. Red ones are better but it's a $17 watch. It's going to give you your uh, overall blood oxygen reading. We don't have anything else we can look at other than the current reading here, but in the app, you can see more. We're going to just bail out of this and go to the next one, which is pressure. Now, that's not atmospheric pressure. That's stress, and it's showing me that I've got basically a 36. I've been getting less stress throughout the day, and there's nothing else to show other than that one number that's taken per hour, and it shows you your 24-hour period uh, from when it started calculating it. Now, come over here. You get your last night's sleep time total, and I swipe up, and I've got the total with light and deep broken up with the display by day for Friday, Saturday, Sunday is in there. And here's some more of the summary of the breakout of light, deep, and uh, when you went to bed and when you got up, I guess. And we've got another dot here to go down. This is the QR code takes you to the app. And from the app, you can get more data related to sleep. So all those features are available. And over here, we get into the weather forecast information. Where you are currently, Fahrenheit or centigrade. What it looks like. And... Um, Swipe down and you get the overall forecast for the next several days, both weather conditions and temperature. Now, music player. This is local music it's set up for. And that's one of the big additions that's in the um, the newer version of this watch. It has two, two gigabytes of storage in it. It can hold all kinds of songs. It comes shipping with a few songs. So to demonstrate the speaker for you, I'm just going to simply hit play and let's listen. Okay, you hear that? Now, that's not even full volume. Let's crank it up. It's coming out right here. You can mute it simply by touching it. And you can load it up with your own music as well. And that's the last one. So pressing the button gets us right back here to the home. And uh, we have another button down at the bottom. When we press this, we get a listing of all of the apps that we've opened so far. And of course, you can clear, clear these out if you want to. When you push it twice, now you get all of your different settings. Twist your wrist to see the time, Bluetooth, your power level. Uh, your power savings mode, do not disturb, your bright white flashlight that you've got in this one. You've got ability to change your brightness and all of the other features. There's your twist your wrist to see the time. Cover the screen to turn the watch off is here. 
You're always on display, which we saw was the analog one. And constant light setting doesn't go into the always on display. It keeps the watch lit up. So we'll do that for now. It'll go for five minutes or whatever you want, up to 20 minutes it looks like. We'll leave it for five minutes. And now it'll be in constant on mode. And we got to that right here. Then you've got your overall settings, our amazing chat GPT, and this, folks, is a little voice recorder. You simply tap to record, let it record a little bit. You can watch it happening right there, and then you can pause it. You can um, talk some more if you want to, and if you want to continue recording, you just simply tap the button, and it'll start recording again. And when you're done, you hit the white one, and now we have a recording, and here it is. Simply tap to record, let it record a little bit. You can watch it happening right there, and then you can pause it. You just simply tap the button, and it'll start recording again. And when you're done, ta-da! And you heard it cut out the part where I was on uh, pause mode. And those are uh, records are built in here, and you can access them through your uh, phone if you want to when you pair this thing up. You can edit all of the uh, different... Uh, items that you've put selectively in here. There's a whole lot more you can put in there. Those are the main ones that I use, but if you include other things, you can add these. You can rearrange them, whatever you'd like to do. And they're right there. Okay, that was from double tapping the bottom button. Tapping the top buttons here. We have gone this way and that way. When we come up, you get this really nice translucent display. Shows you date and time. And then other information like your weather, your step information, sleep time, alarms, countdown timers, stopwatch, and other apps that you've most recently used if you want. Or you can go into all apps right here. Of course, you can also get into all apps with a single tap here. I think this is a listing of your most recent apps that you've looked at. And a single tap takes you to all of the apps, the same we just saw there, which I guess is a good time for us to walk through a lot of these. The app market itself are different apps now that you can download that's not the Google Play Store, but these are um, different apps that they'll be adding uh, that they can push to you through a server. It says hundreds of applications are going to be available. This is that infamous AI watch face, and this is so cool. Uh, we're going to show you that uh, a little bit later. This is local music. We already played that. And there's the voice memo, the ultimate chat GPT. We got to have the phone with us. We're going to do that later as well. There's smart memo, which ties to chat GPT. Muslim prayer is here. You can set location and so forth. And uh, it'll notify you for uh, when it's time to do your prayers. Um, that's here. We already looked at heart rate, blood pressure, and blood oxygen. Sport is your uh, different sporting activities. And the graphics are just great. These upgraded graphics are beautiful. You can put it on whichever one you want, and it begins animating right away. You've got running and cycling and walking, riding. Um, one foot is like walking, hiking, but with like without a track so if you tie it to your phone to get your trajectory through gps you won't get one when you're doing that you got climbing mountains football yeah it's just a treat just to page through them and see what's there and then more exercises are all in here and these are groups you saw i just touched on running and walking swimming here you go you got swimming pool or open water and you can set up settings on any of these as well that's cool. And that's all in the uh, sport activity, which was right there. Last night's sleep time, pressure, again, not blood pressure, I mean, not uh, blood pressure or uh, air pressure outside, but stress is what that is. Your activity records, if you do some activities, they're going to be here. Um, well, this is your step count information. We've already looked at all of that stuff, too. Then you've got... Um, after that, your phone for making calls. It is Bluetooth capable watch, right? Your weather report and alarms and a breathing in out relaxation program, which by the way, I set up to be in this side button rather than my workout activities. This is programmable, whatever you want. 
you can set up uh, how you want it to work and then when you uh, actually activate it like this it's beeping periodically right now or vibrating as you inhale and you hold your breath and then it's going to exhale without any uh, vibration at all and you see how slow it's going you have a large capability uh, window of how rapidly you want it to work so if you're in deep meditation very relaxed you can get it down to just two or three four breaths per minute it's amazing and that's all set up in here as well very extensive that's why i like it on this side helps me out a lot can you tell i'm a bit hyper sometimes yeah okay we are down here at met those of you who know it this is where you do it and this will tell you what your accumulated METR for the week. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail because I don't fully understand it, but it is uh, something that's supported with these watches. You got remote camera when you're tied to your phone. Find your phone, of course. Overall messages uh, tied in with your uh, Bluetooth calling. You've got a simple calendar in here, shows you the current day and then the actual full calendar. And we get back out of here. We have, it jumps back up to the top each time, so we got to keep going. Drain is interesting. This is going to make a vibration and sound to get the water out of the speaker if you've been swimming with it. That's an, an AMOLED screen, swimming capability, advanced features to clear it. $17 watch. It still blows me away. And hey, it's 2024. Why not? It's about time these things get better and cheaper, right? Okay, calendar settings we're going to get into uh, in a minute. Uh, you've got some games in here. Roll the dice and B fly are added to this one. And oh, we were at drain. So you got a stopwatch. You've got a siren in this. You hear that? And you can place an emergency call if you need to. And it's counting down for that. So, yeah, we don't want to go too far with this. Uh, it, and that, of course, needs you to be Bluetooth connected to your phone. And that whole thing needs to be uh, set up for you as well. Okay, timers. We've looked at the timers, uh, at least when we were paging through. This is what the actual page looks like for your overall timers. You got additional things in here. A calculator that was before the drain. So here's a nice, colorful, multi uh, button, nice, bright white results. You can do percentages on this times 20%, right there. Nice, very nice implementation of a cal uh, calculator in here. And then after that, uh, your voice assistant. Now, this is not the chat GPT. This is your Google or Siri type voice assistant. So you have both types of way, uh, ways of getting information delivered right here to your watch. Uh, short video control. Works in China. Hasn't worked out, there, out of China as far as I know yet. You tie it in with your phone with the QR code to the app. And theoretically, you can play TikTok videos and you can control them from the watch, forward, backward, and thumbs up, those kind of things. That's all in there. And then um, a compass is built into this one. Now we need to rotate it to calibrate it. And like this. And there we go. Okay. So it's showing you where you're pointed. And um, yeah, you just use it as a regular uh, compass. After the compass, we go into business card holders. This is where you can use the NFC function of the watch. And you have to uh, pair it to the watch to be able to do all of that stuff. But it's available for you for those that use that. Same thing with wallet. This is where you could do uh, payments um, using the systems in China. It's not working yet out of China. Blood sugar. Now, this is interesting. We don't see that with all of the other biometrics that were up at the top. This one's going to come in and basically use the diodes in here. Okay, we need to sync all that stuff up, but it'll do uh, actual blood sugar measurement. Accuracy, I don't know. 
We're really waiting to get a reading on how accurate that is compared to the actual prick your finger and measure it type. Me and Ta. Um, again, that's going to tie in with the app. Not I, I'm sure what that is, but I think it's so that you can work together with partners and exercise and stuff. Um, anyway, that's available. And then the respiratory rate we already played with. And uh, Airplane War is another type of a game that you can play. And... Yeah, you can move it whenever whatever you're shooting at starts to come into the picture, like right there. Fail, okay. <laughs> Not a gamer here. But anyway, that's on the watch as well. So all of those features are available. Now let's go deeper into the settings. Now again, the way I've got this watch particularly set up, a double tap on the right-hand side gets me all this information. Scroll down, there's my settings gear, and I can get right into it. Personal information will be... In the app, when you pair over to it, you can set up your notifications. Universal now tells you about the watch, and it's called a WearFit 6. Yeah, there are so many different names that so many different companies are using for this. But when you're Bluetooth pairing it, that's what you're basically looking for. Or the VA9 Ultra 2 is the actual name that it's assigned to this particular one. And then the rest of the information about it's there too. You have all the different languages that you would be interested in shown here. And there's a few. You've got some European languages, Asian languages, of course. They uh, are in their native pronunciation, so you can recognize them if that's your language, I guess, uh, which makes it convenient. But for me, it makes it challenging to see exactly what it is because I don't know uh, what the countries are. Uh, connecting the phone is right there. You can restore your factory default, restart, and shut down. So simple, basic stuff is under universal. Do not disturb mode. You can set this up um, all day, or you can set up a time frame that it'll go into that mode. You've got the display and brightness, and we looked at all of this. The full brightness on this one is wonderful. Beautiful AMOLED screen, and it doesn't drain the battery very much either. Or for the review, we're going to keep it down a little bit lower. But just to show you, if I hit the button just right, it can get as dim as that, which is really, really good. Let's leave it at about right here. The raise your wrist to see the time, cover the screen to turn it off. We've talked all about that already, and that's here in the settings. Sound and touch, where you can change the media volume level. I usually leave it all the way up. Haptic reminder if it's going to vibrate for you. And, of course, set everything uh, default or powerful if you'd like. Your system notification and even a tactile feel when you rotate the knob here. Yep, it's vibrating each time I, I turn it. That's available for you as well. And that's all under sound and touch. Gesture control. Turn that thing on here. And now you can um, answer your incoming calls and turn off alarms and stuff simply by shaking your arm. And um, sometimes, for those of you who are expressive, you might want to keep that off. Otherwise, you'll have unintended usage of it. You can set up a password on this one. You can actually erase the data after the first five times. If it's wrong, oh my gosh. Okay, be careful with that. You really don't need it, I presume, unless you're going to be doing things um, like working with banking and whatnot. But you can lock your phone down that way if you want to with passwords. The key definition is where you can program this one or this one to be whatever you'd like it to be. The top one is fixed when, um, what it does. And after that, you've got your battery showing you the current level and the uh, usage statistics for the whole day as well. It was on charge most of the day. That's why it's way up like that. Your sleep time information, your sleep mode, your bedtime and wake up time and sleep tracking that you can turn on or off and a uh, reminder for uh, charging so that uh, you don't overcharge it, I guess. A lot of controls in here we haven't seen uh, very much. Okay, that was on uh, sleep, your sport, where you can automatically pause or not. So these are all the settings related to the apps that you don't normally see. Very nice. We're getting close. After your uh, bedside, uh, after your sport, you've got your heart rate. 
And this is where you have uh, real-time detection or whole point detection. I think that's uh, periodically um, rate notification information if it's too high or too low. And you can set all of those. Wow. Wow, it just keeps going. Look at that. Aerobic fitness notifications, high heart rate notifications, all of that simply in the heart settings within settings. Now, bedside clock, this is if you put it on the charger, if you want it to have the green clock show up on, a, on it or not. If you have it off, you charge it, it just charges. Although it does have a, a fun-looking animation and tells you the percentage charged in the center, but eventually that goes off and it'll go black or to the... Uh, time if you want to as well. That's the bedside clock, your menu themes, all the different types of ways you can display your apps. And this is the one we're using, just the text style. But you can do these little cards. You can have three in a row. You can have circular. You can have the Apple bubble style. All of those things are available. And then the wallpaper behind it you can go to the app and you can set that too so that you can have the uh, what it looks like behind it, which is, this is a wallpaper I added from that app actually that's there. So that's pretty nice. Okay, back into settings. That was menu theme. Now Smart Island, you've seen that on the Apple phone, right? Uh, Smart Island, when an app supports it, we'll put that little island that floats up at the top. Uh, and it'll show you information or you can interact with it, whatever you'd like to do. And this is uh, some new feature with this one. It hasn't been on others before. So that's one of the new uh, additions that you're seeing in this particular watch. Then you've got your uh, secondary screen settings. You can do split screen or secondary screen. And that's when you have the like slide out uh, screens on the side. Uh, you can choose between which way you want it to display. And then you've got um, your health reminder information. Again, tie into the app directly for that. Power savings mode lets you uh, simply turn it on or off, shows you your current power level. And we saw that, of course, when we double tapped on the side, you could get into that uh, feature there as well. And then finally, a help guide that'll actually uh, tie you back into the app and then take you to a website that has the help that goes along with this particular watch. And that is pretty much everything in the overall settings. So let's play with the uh, AI stuff now. So the AI is in two different implementations. One, the watch face design, which we've already seen, and that uses kind of a graphic engine. And then the traditional chat GPT, which is this icon, yeah? And, um, we have to bring in the phone because it is basically tied to the app. Now, the chat GPT button here and here are identical in that it'll bring up the um, opportunity to ask your questions. However, the chat GPT version 3.5 turbo that was in the VA9 Ultra and VA9 Max has been retained. Yes, not upgraded as far as I can tell, but they're calling this chat GPT-2, actually 2.0, I think. And that's, of course, a misnomer uh, because they're already up to four point something turbo now uh, in, in the open market. But we're working with uh, the chat GPT 3.5 still. And when you tap the button, you get the 2.0 look and feel. OK, that is uh, basically the fact that now you have these two different things you can go into, either smart Q&A or intelligent creation. What are those? Well, we get to the same thing when we tap here and we are in the question and answer section here. And it's showing you um, basically some sample questions that you could have and you could ask them and you'll get an answer back. You can uh, hold down to speak, or you can tap this button here and bring up the keyboard and type in your answer, either way, or your question. The smart Q&A looks like this. The create button is this intelligent creation, and it takes you to these other topics. This is what's new. 
and not really sure that it's very well thought out yet. They're still working on it, I think. There's health questions and answers, sports plan and diet, for example, and they're shown here. So if we go in, say, healthy eating in either of these, you get into this kind of stuff. There's a few more graphics on here, but you see the titles are the same. Fat reducing meal, muscle, well, muscle gain, muscle enhancing, and so forth. Let's do home cooking. And it highlights that. And then there's cuisine. You can choose from any of these. Let's say a Japanese diet. And now I can generate. Oh, we have to have a description still. Uh, spicy. Generate. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not sure. Okay, we got to come back up in here. What do you want? Um, meal. And now we generate. Okay, it's going to generate a meal with the Japanese diet, spicy, and so forth. And now we're getting um, the text for that. So what they've done is, and this is speech recognition, this is where I would say breakfast. And hit finish. You have 60 seconds of what you want to say there. And now it will be generating uh, that instead of this, I guess. Um, but basically, you get these prompts that they've encouraged you to use in these different sections. Instagram, TikTok, scripting, so forth. This one's not going to give us anything because they're tied together and I already activated it from there. So we'll bail out of this one. But that's what the 2.0 chat GPT is all about. And that's available from the button here or from here. Now, in terms of the actual GPT and its whole function... That's part of the uh, app description that we did for the VA9 um, Max. And I'm going to tack on that VA9 overview of the app right now because it's basically the same for the Ultra 2. But I don't want to, um, you know, waste your time in trying to find that other video. So here's the full on review of the app related to this watch with only the chat GPT and the watch face design being different. First of all, from the Google Play Store, this is what the icon looks like. It's a colorful heart. When you install it and then you open it, you land into uh, some pages to get yourself registered. Once you have it all registered, then you'll uh, come into this page. And we already showed you the chat GPT, which is this little floating bubble. Notice I go immediately into an ad. This is the love-hate relationship with this particular app. It's heavily advertised, but it's bringing in revenue for it to be able to do some incredible things. So it's a trade-off. In this case, they erred on the side of getting enough revenue to really be proactive about making a good app. So I put up with the ads. When you've got it in this opening screen and you're tethered to um, this particular watch, ChatGPT will appear. Otherwise, it isn't there for other watches. You'll find that when you go into the devices. Well, it will hop over there. This is where another ad comes in. We get them all the time every time you switch around. The VA9 Pro, it's showing up here. And because of that, we've got the... Uh, uh, chat GPT capability. So besides chat GPT, the page is lined up with a bunch of different um, pieces of information related to the data that's collected on the watch and some ads and some training things and videos that you can play. First of all, we go into here. This gives us a rainbow color throughout the week of all of... Oh boy, here we go. Now another ad comes up. We're going to close it. Uh, all of your step count information uh, this week, last week, your intensity, your hours of activity, some nice data showing up here, some good breakdowns of information, distance, calories, exercise, and different than your step counting. And, of course, you can change the days in here as well. And here's yesterday's information. Had a little bit on that and so forth. So that's all in here in the first section. It's also available as a little card, but I suppressed that one so that uh, since it's already up here at the top. These little buttons are things that you can go into uh, 
You and Me, Sleep Music, Health Daily, Novel, Games, new stuff. Not related to what we're talking about right now. This is an ad, I think. It's a Health Guide Sleep Institute uh, bear, uh, uh, information wearing eye masks. Uh, you can go off there and look at it if you want to, but we're looking at data. So I got a sport record. Now it's loading the uh, the information on that, and giving me another ad that now I have to wait for a countdown to get past. Then I can skip that video and I can skip installing it. And I'm finally where I want to be. Sorry, but that's how it's working. And I want you to see the ads you got to go through. But if you get in the habit, you can get through them quickly. Here's our sporting activities, and there's different walks that I've done. Now, I wanted to show this to you in particular. I'm going to take it off camera for a second, and I'm going to switch to uh, Google Maps here. There we go. And now I'm in the satellite view, and I've got the track of an out, of a walk that I did in a, in a resort area. This and you got pace and charts and details, but this dynamic trajectory, I can tap this button... I can personalize this to any of these different kinds. I typically use this one with the little running guy here. You can have different music backgrounds. It's going to create an MP4 video. I'm going to set it up for no music right now. Check mark that. Now watch what happens when we preview and share the video. I tap this button. It'll say it's going to record. Start now. Gives me my steps. It shows me my trajectory as I was walking it in real time and the mileage accumulated to that point for the entire duration along with step frequency curve. And then I can export that video that was just created to email or, or just about anywhere, post it to TikTok probably. All of that stuff on each and every one of these is available. Now, pace is shown here per mile, your overall chart of pace, cadence, altitude change, and the significant details of the entire activity are shown as well. Really robust. This is the best I have seen uh, for sport record recording and reporting uh, on any app. Now let's jump over to sleep. Here we go. Last night's sleep time broken into wide awake, light sleep, and deep sleep totals, and a uh, score, and a pie chart, and an ad. My goodness, this is a five and a half minute ad. Uh, I don't want to install it. So basically, I just have to bail out of the uh, app completely and come back into it occasionally when those insane ads. Facebook, mind you, did you notice that? Dang, amazing. Um, that locks you up, just basically locks you up. But that's sleep time. Here's the rainbow active. I thought I took that card out. Maybe I did and it came back. This is the same exact thing as this, um, but it's in here. Healthy heart. This is your continuous heart rate going right there. I've had it off for quite a while right now, and I wanted to do that on purpose. You can see I just put it on recently, so it's just starting up again. Giving you an overall heart rate range, it says. I've got a peak at 140. Aw, oh, come on. I didn't make you guys sit through that one. Okay, it said I got a peak of 140. I can't quite hit it right there. Yeah, it shows that. I think that was just an anomaly um, because nothing else is significant there uh, along with it. But anyway, you got your continuous heart rate last night wearing it you can see there and then being awake all of this stuff is happening and we've got um change of days and stuff like that as well oh there we go there's yesterday and some time when i took it off as well so all of that's in there for heart rate this is weight management where you can put in targets and uh, weights you can um, get your calories and targets on your uh, step count and input updates to your weight if you want to, all of that stuff. So I keep playing with different things. This is for an obese 30.3 severe obesity. Um, not whatever the next level is, but anyway, you can monitor your uh, weight management as well. Then there's blood pressure. These are instantaneous readings. You can take them um, 
whenever you want to. You can input it to take it right now, and it will give you the uh, systolic-diastolic readings uh, for you, but it's not doing continuous blood pressure in this particular app. Same with blood oxygen. You can get an instantaneous reading. You can't uh, activate it from the phone, you have to activate it from the watch because you got to wait out a minute or so for it to calculate it. I found this to be extremely low compared to any of the other devices that I've used. 81, uh, 79, that's ridiculous. I know I'm always above 95 unless I've got sleep apnea or something, it might drop a little bit. So I don't trust the blood oxygen reading at all on here. Glucose management. Now this is blood glucose, okay, non-invasively measured. We've had some reviews on watches and some feedback on folks, whether it's uh, faked or not. Uh, this is not giving you a chart that looks typical to when you're eating and stuff like that. Um, supposedly it's taking these continuously, maybe once every hour or so, and it's giving you the values. And they're all over the place. Normal, random. I don't know what those are, and I can't switch between them. Here's yesterday. It's not taking them during the time I took the watch off. That's good. But there's all these different values. If anybody can make sense out of that, please let us know. Uh, range, average. You can take an instantaneous one if you want to. There's the day before that. Uh, so you're getting a blue, blood glucose monitoring reading um, that you can play with, literally play with. Here's uh, fatigue. That's your stress level. Once it gets above 59, I guess, um, then it's considered it's going into another range. But this is your stress level. They call it pressure, average value. And then this is characteristic. You have these different... Um, Video, uh, audios that you can play, and some of them are videos too, I think. These are, uh, with headphones, things you can listen to, meditative tracks, relaxation, to try to help bring your fatigue or your stress down. Built into the app, mind you, okay? This also does respiratory rate, real time. Here I am currently at 21, 24 while I was asleep. There's that peak again, like when I hit 140, it was at 35 breaths per minute. Maybe it was. Maybe I was doing a light sprint somewhere or something, or climbing stairs. Uh, frequency, all of that stuff is here. There's yesterday. This is when I had the watch off. It looks like it got a random reading here and here, but the rest of it looks pretty good. And then the day before that, just connecting the dots with a straight line when there was no data. That's respiratory rate effective activity. I think this is when you're actually doing your METs, when you're really moving and getting some exercise value. If you're knowledgeable about the MET stuff, then this will make sense to you. Here's the last couple of days data on that as well. So there's quite a bit of biometric data that's collected with the app. It's up to you basically to discern what works for you and whether or not it's accurate. Ladies, you got menstrual cycle stuff. You can go through the next steps, set up your calendar, your when it started, when your length is, all those kind of things, and that'll give you information as well. And then, of course, yeah, you could edit the cards. I could take out the rainbow activity. I could move things around if I want to. And you come back here, and now I don't have that duplicated on the, on the app. And this is an ad at the bottom. Now we get to exercise. This is where you have... Uh, Exercise duration, all of your courses, aims, part, advanced abdominal muscles, all these courses that you can literally take, and they're free, at least the beginning ones are. So that's built into it. Popular courses recommended for you. Now, you might try downloading this app and see if you can access all of this stuff without having to have your watch connected. If so, that would be pretty cool. Just hit the exercise tab, and you might get all this free material here to start working with without even having a watch. Possibly. I haven't tried that. But it's all in here. Um, plan, outdoor run, indoor run, walking. This is what I go to when I'm uh, doing my walks that gives me that track that then I can later record and send out as an mp3 you can have music playing with it you can set targets whatever you'd like as well 
And that's all across the top there. Micro Life. This is some sort of a game feature they've built in here too. I am not familiar with this. I'm just going to show it to you. And then devices. Here's the watch. Here are the different dials that you can install. You got all the dials and they've got some really nice styles. They're not just your classic picture with still time on it. Look at this. Great detail. These are the new ones they're claiming. It said you can only have one in the watch at a time. So I'd like many, many more. This is what I'm used to. Just a photograph with a representation of digital or analog white time against the background. But these are definitely uh, very well done uh, watch faces in different categories. Ranking, art, beats, nature, whatever that is. There you go. Lots of colors, lots of combinations. And uh, in Chinese, it's saying load more. And of course, you can get, yeah, just pages and pages of it. So for as far as ads go for this particular watch, uh, ads, uh, yeah, as far as ads too, as far as watch faces go. But notice some of them, some of them cost you some money, two bucks, a dollar. And some of them are for free too. If it says not installed, there's no charge for those. So here you go. It's just uh, categories that you can work with. You got uh, video tutorials, graphic tutorials. There's your favorite contacts, QR codes, set up weather, find your device, all of these things. Set up your wallet, okay? Uh, remote camera, card pack for business card trading and stuff. Other settings where you can change your energy units. Yeah. Um, hourly automatic measurement and... Um, the raise your wrist, twist your wrist to see the time. And one that's missing here is changing time uh, 12, 24 hours. At this point, the watch seems to be in military time or 24-hour time. And I haven't found a way to switch it to 12, just to let you know. I've got to call into them to do an app update because in other watches that pair with this watch, it appears right here under preferences. I think it just got left out. So expect an app update or an update to the watch probably by the time you get yours that you'll be able to toggle 12, 24-hour uh, time as well. In fact, firmware upgrade, this is where you would do it and it would update the, the watch for you if there's an update needed to the watch for that. And finally, me, this is you and your information, um, your wear fit uh, measurements. Oh, look at that. You can skip ads, but I'm sure you have to pay for that. Sleep music, your free dials and so forth. He and me, this is where you can have family members tied in and you can monitor your family member with the watch, with their watch through this app. Maybe great if you're monitoring your kids, uh, annual goals and so forth, medals. I mean, it's really robust. It's, this is an app to take time and, and sit with for a while. Your overall health data now is going to give you the synopsis of all of this stuff. So this is a good place to come to just get what all of your measurements are in one place. The leaderboard, your orders, assets, and personal information are all here as, to, as well under the me. Back to home again. And one more time, ChatGPT is where you go uh, to see the results of the last chat that you did on your watch or to enter a new uh, chat directly from the phone without needing to use your watch and without registering with ChatGPT. But again, it will not appear unless you buy the watch, pair the watch to the uh, phone, and cause it to come on within the app. This is an add-on that the app will display, but only if you use a watch that has this chat GPT built into it. And at this point in time, gang, this is the only watch that does. So there you have it. Amazing watches. The VA9 Pro Max in the traditional Apple size and shape of a case with all of the goodies that it has in it. And the VA9 Ultra 2 looks more like the uh, Ultra with the three buttons on it that uh, Apple produces. But again, both of these are very unique 
full of all kinds of goodies, lots of AI implemented in it, and available right now. You can pick these up through Alibaba. That's the location we're recommending because the manufacturer, Valdis, has uh, these available in one unit or more. You could buy five of them and give them out to your friends if you want to. Uh, up to 300 at $16.88. And you do pay a little shipping on that, but it's not outrageous. For the VA9 Pro Max, for the... Uh, AliExpress listing on the same watch by a slightly different name, the HK9 Pro Plus. It jumps up to about $35. This is retail outlet now. And again, you can pick it up um, with all kinds of different combinations of bands and things. And this is the combination with all the bands. It's less money if you pick up just the watch with the one band it comes with. But when you get over to the link, and the link is in the show notes, click on through and just tap on these different ones and you can see what combination you want and what your overall price is. That's the HK9 Pro Plus. That's a Generation 3. For the VA9 Ultra 2, right? The upgrade from the original Ultra. Same price, $16.88 from Alibaba, the Valdis uh, uh, home page or website from them uh, you might want to just think about getting one of each at this price and bulk them together for the same shipping there is a listing at aliexpress for the hk9 ultra 2 but guys it is not the same watch this is i'm pretty sure exactly the same as the um the other one uh, so um, be careful. You can get different configurations, and this twenty nine twenty eight is the price with just the band that comes with it. So that's available, but check it very carefully to make sure if you're really wanting to get the Ultra Two, that um, you're not picking up something that's not the same watch. Uh, Valdis, as far as I know, their uh, link in aliexpress is uh outside usa is it's functional and i'll have that link in there um, for both of them that you can pick the watches up directly from valdis or from aliexpress as an hk um, version um, but for the ultra 2 you really need to pick up the one from the uh the valdis listing okay Wow, we've covered a lot today. We are screaming into 2024. Nine years ago when I started this channel, I had absolutely no idea, well, first of all, that Taylor Swift would be incredibly popular like she was. Is I mean, wow, wow. And secondly, that we would ever be seeing merchandise like this. AMOLED screen displays, Bluetooth calling, onboard storage for uh, music, uh, amazing AI. We didn't even do AI back nine years ago. And chat GPT, I didn't even have the ability to talk about that at all a year ago. It's all so brand new. So this is the time. This is the place. And this is the moment. Mm, could be a song. This is this is where we're going, guys. Uh, I, I've got a lot of things coming. We are talk about rings. We've got the Aura ring, and we've got the um, Ringcon ring, and Circular, another ring, i got to find where to put it, is on its way out for review as well. And rings are supposed to be hot this year, too. Both Samsung and, I think, Apple, uh, Google, they're all working on rings. So... Yeah, it's going to be a hot year 2024, a resurrection of technology in the wearable department. Thank you all for being here. Thanks so much for your support. Really appreciate your subscriptions, your likes, your comments. We do answer the comments. Um, and uh, we'll see you really soon with another edition.